What's the sit rep on New York? The Russian jamming rigs have neutralized our air support. As long as they maintain air dominance, it's a losing fight. We cannot lose New York. Are there any special mission units in the area we can request? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Battle of New York City. Today and outside, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most epic introductions to a Call of Duty ever made, where we destroy a signal jammer on top of the New York Stock Exchange and then invade and launch missiles from a Russian sub, destroying a fleet and retaking New York City. This battle spans over two missions, and as I said, it acts as an introduction to Modern Warfare 3. And using a little bit of noclip, we can take a look at it from a very different perspective. Frost! Frost! Get switched on! We gotta move now! The first mission of the Battle of New York City is called Black Tuesday. We start off inside of a Humvee that was just hit by an RPG on our way to the Stock Exchange. Our goal is to get there and eliminate a signal jammer, which is currently blocking all comms in the region. Jammer's 500 meters north. We'll like it from here. Let's go. But with a little bit of no clip, of course, we can take a look at this mission from a very different perspective. This is the area we start off here with a striker right in front of us. And of course, our Humvee is very much so destroyed, but the wheels are still spinning, funny enough. Just behind us is a whole bunch of rubble, as well as some streets that don't seem to have a lot of detail to them, and I don't think they have very much collision either. It drops off almost immediately. If we take a look from above, we can get an idea at the scale of this map, which it's a lot larger than I ever thought it was. But right below us is where we started, and of course the stock exchange is just up around the corner. But the rest of this area over here is of course where we fly over towards the end of the mission. But with no clip, of course, we can fly through these streets and take a look at what's going on here. It seems that some of them don't exactly connect up as well. Like this one, for instance, is much higher than the connecting street that it's supposed to link up with. And of course, I mean, the models for the buildings are just essentially flat textures. There's nothing really inside of them. Although some of them are 3D, there's also other ones that are definitely not. We can see, though, these streets continue for a long while. There's a ton of them out here. And the reason that that most likely is, is because later on in the mission, you're inside of a helicopter flying above a lot of this. So you probably can get a glimpse at some of this stuff, although I imagine most of it is very far in the distance. Now, what I do find quite cool is a lot of these roofs do actually have collision. You can walk up here, which I think is awesome, and even the one below us. I think there might be enemies that spawn here, perhaps later on in the helicopter scene, so we'll keep an eye out for that. But there's multiple building rooftops up here, and all of them do have collision, and they're relatively well modeled. This one even has a little spawn room for the AI. Besides the rooftops that spawn enemy AI, the other ones that have collision most likely have it because of the Predator drone. It would be a little bit strange if the missile you were shooting just went through the top of a building. But that rooftop over there is the one that we are after. It has the jammer on top of it, although it's not exactly moving, and of course, there are no enemies here ahead of time. And if we go on over and take a look at Google Maps, it's kind of insane just how accurate this little chunk of New York City is. Your team starts off in their Humvee right here on Exchange Place, where it's destroyed, and you continue on foot up and around the corner, where eventually we'll be cut off and have to go through an apartment complex to the next street over, continuing up around the corner eventually to the New York Stock Exchange. Which, going back to the game here, as we just saw, the Stock Exchange is one block away at a straight diagonal from where we start at. And if we go ahead and drop to the ground and start moving up, we can hit our first checkpoint. But before we do, we can take a look here around the corner. To our left is a couple more strikers just stored and waiting to be used here in a second. And to our right is an enemy open top light vic. When we move up and hit the checkpoint, this truck comes flying in and immediately starts shooting at you. And of course, if you don't take it out in time, it will absolutely wreck you. Friendlies, hold your fire. That means don't shoot them, and just after that, your friendly strikers, as well as a whole bunch of infantry, start moving up on the road. Right on the 
At this point, you are just right down the street from the stock exchange. You have it in sight, but when you move up too far, more enemies start collecting ahead of you. And shortly thereafter, so does a hind, which let's just take an up close look here. It does seem that there is actually two people inside of it, a pilot and a gunner. And it does seem that no matter what direction I face, the gun does indeed try and kill me. So even if I'm inside of the helicopter, it will turn and shoot itself. In order to get away from the big scary helicopter, your team diverts to 15 Broad Street, which seems to be essentially like a hotel or perhaps an apartment building here. But if we look to the left instead, we can see that there is a little spawn room here for the enemy AI, which is kind of cool. You probably wouldn't notice this normally, considering if you go up to it, you'll probably end up getting killed. I mean, there's a lot of enemies here. Oh my god, wait, I can get the helicopter to kill its own people. That is amazing. You are going to die. Wow. And although it can kill the enemies, it doesn't seem like it can kill the vehicles, unfortunately. It just keeps jiggling it back and forth. And the infantry does seem to have infinite spawns just beyond where those two Vicks are, in a play space that we'll be at very shortly. Oh, but they do kill our friendlies. There's also some subways here, which I'm not sure why this is the case, but of course they're filled up with debris. But if we go through the debris, there is actually a little bit of an interior in here, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's not much, but there is collision. We can walk in here, and I enjoy that. Get off the street! Go right! Go right! To escape, man. Same as before. Burn the jammer, kill the bad guys. <laughs> I like that. But moving on back to the ground here inside of 15 Broad Street, we can hear that our objective has not changed. Our goal is still that jammer on top of the stock exchange. We're tasked to head upstairs and follow our squad lead, but of course this is outside, so let's not do that. Instead, let's no clip outside the map. Right here, there's a little bit of a hallway, but there's not a ton of detail here. Behind this door, there is absolutely nothing. However, behind the other one, it actually leads to a staircase that we'll use later on in the mission. If we go all the way to the top of it, we can see that it kind of just cuts off in some area here that, I mean, looks very strange. There's no doorway up here, and there's very little modeling in general. In fact, I mean, the detailing is pretty much non-existent. But then again, of course, you're never supposed to see any of this. At the bottom of this staircase, however, is the exit door that we'll be going through very soon. Heading on upstairs now. Let's see what this area has for us. So on the second floor here where Sandman is, there's a few things to check out. First behind us is this hallway. It's just another one of these with some more doors. It's very liminal in nature. And again, it doesn't seem like there's any rooms here. Although this door right here does lead to that same staircase. So kind of makes you wonder why we're not just using that. And as far as the staircase that we use to get up here, we can see, of course, it's, it's blocked by a bunch of debris, which I suppose is supposed to be signaling that it's destroyed. But if we look... I mean, it's not destroyed at all. It's completely fine. And directly above us, there is an identical floor to the one below that we can play in, although it's completely filled with a barrier, so we have to use no clip here. It's pretty dark, but it's the same kind of deal. We have the elevators, we have a little door over here, which I don't think leads... Oh, it does lead somewhere! Oh my god! Wow! So it actually leads right where we're about to be going through. You can see right below us is some rubble that we're going to climb up after passing through this door. But if we follow the staircase up even more, we can see that at the top, there's, again, not very much. Although it's a much larger space in here, there is very little modeling, and the textures are very plain. Let's keep Entering that door, of course, spawns some enemies on the floor above. As we push through the apartments. And it'll lead us to an Intel laptop. Nice. Now, this hind that's crashed into the building does actually have an interior, unlike the other one that's flying in the sky. And, of course, we can see there's a dead body hanging out of it. Poor fella. And since there's no pilot or gunner inside of it, we can get a look at the model in here, which is very, I mean, not so good. But then again, I don't think you ever really get a look at any of this. It's pretty cool to see. Continuing through the apartments, though, we can finally make our way to that staircase that we met earlier. Maintain the timeline. We need to hit the exchange. And make our way to the stock exchange. That door that was completely closed before is now cracked open slightly. Multiple voices. Alley behind the door. Frost, toss a nine bang. And on the other side of it are enemies, and we're supposed to toss a nine bang. Move, move! Why don't you take us back onto Wall Street? Jammer's not far. 
Watch the windows and doors. Double check the shadows. Truck, you getting anything on your comms? Nothing but static. Jam has got us in the dark. Now, I know it's really simple, but it is absolutely amazing how much detail even just the alleyway like this has. First of all, there's a little girl here that has a Sledgehammer Games sledgehammer. And behind us is a curated out-of-the-map space. We can see there's a truck here, but beyond this is an area that you would never see from anywhere else but here in the mission. So even though this little curated space is supposed to be like connecting to a street on the other side, well, you can see that that street is quite a bit further past where it is trying to say that it is. But nevertheless, I do think it is absolutely awesome the amount of detail that went into this. Heading on up the stairs, though, we enter another building. Hold up, quiet. Shooters in the store below. Switch them off. Watch that. Which is a storefront. Rich, take up Overwatch while we clear the store. I'm on it. This trigger is essentially like a little defend phase where enemies start pouring in the front. And of course, your goal is to try and survive. Fending them off so we can get down the street to the stock exchange. Which, this part of the mission showcases the cool new grenade launcher. As if Modern Warfare needed another noob tube. Back inside this store, however, there is some out of bounds space, such as these balconies, which are kind of cool. They're not exactly detailed, and there's even some missing textures. But there's also this vault back here that we passed up, and inside of it, well, there's not a ton, but there is a bunch of safety deposit boxes, a red light, and a little space that we can walk around. And lastly, of course, right below us is an Intel laptop. But if we fly up into the air before moving on to the next checkpoint around the corner, we can see that there are three Heinz just sitting here being stored, waiting to be used for the next sequence. And two of them are clipped into each other. And if we move up and hit the next checkpoint, I believe those Heinz begin to move. Contact Memorial Building to the north. As well as a bunch more enemies spawning in. Building up ahead. Push forward. There are a few out of bounds spaces, such as this alleyway, which is not entirely interesting. But there is some streets here which continue pretty far into the distance. And this one goes to a very low poly church. And this is actually a real church. It's called Trinity Church. And as you can see here on Google Maps, it is head on to Wall Street, just like it is in the game. It's literally just a facade as well. There's no backs of the building or sides for that matter, which is kind of cool to see because from inside the map, it looks totally normal. And here we can also get a look at these subways that aren't filled with rubble. In fact, these two entrances they actually connect, although obviously they don't exactly go anywhere. We'll secure the lobby while you hit the trading floor. Roger that. Metal, let's roll. We run into a bunch of enemy contact here on the trading floor, which I remember playing this on Veteran. This is one of the harder parts of the campaign, and it's very early on. I think the main reason for that is because there's so much stuff on your screen, and the enemies kind of dig in behind a whole bunch of cover. It's hard to pick them out. It seems that most of them actually spawn just back here in this little room as well, so that's kind of interesting. And it does seem that although there's like tiny out of the map spaces like this, there really isn't much to the interior otherwise, other than yet another Intel laptop. And finally, we've made it to the roof of the stock exchange. After clearing out some enemies, we're able to place some thermite on the power supply of that jamming system, destroying it, knocking it down, and restoring comms around New York. Multiple hostiles on 
now have Opcon on a fully armed Predator. And what's Call of Duty without a Predator drone, am I right? Using a little bit of the Predator drone, we can easily take out some of these guys that are on the rooftops. Although we can also use some no clip and see them all spawn back here, which is kind of cool. And instead of using the Predator drone, we can get up close and personal and take them out. And it does seem the enemies are currently just infinitely spawning at this point, so it's actually quite dangerous to be up here. And right after taking out that enemy hind is when our friendly Blackhawk spawns in and starts moving around the corner. And your team loads up in this helo and gets ready to move on to their next objective, which is that submarine, which is featured in the second mission in the Battle of New York City. Confirm four eagles on board. Exfil complete. Hold on, we're going vertical. Multiple contacts, lower rooftop. Cross, get on it. Metal Zero One, stand by for new mission directive. Over. Roger, Overlord, send it. We have multiple Russian warships near our ports. We sent the SEALs to assault the command vessel. Proceed to New York Harbor to assist. Copy your last. Metal Zero One, be advised, we're seeing multiple enemy rotor wings in your airspace. But before we can, we're intercepted by some enemy hinds, and we need to take them out in order to be able to proceed. Frost, down there, Russian bird. Considering that they have missiles and all we have is a minigun. Now, for this last enemy helicopter, it seems that no matter what you do, it does not get destroyed until the very end, where after you do end up destroying it, it crashes into you. Look out! We're hit! We're hit! Hang on! Shit! We're going down! But unlike most Call of Duty missions, your helicopter does not crash. Your pilot is actually able to regain control, stabilize, and bring you to your next objective. In position. SDV, Team 4, this is Metal Zero One. Radio check in the blind, over. Roger, Zero One, we have you 5x5. Five five. Phase line echo secure. We have execute authority. We're one minute out. Copy that. Just don't start the party without us. Where we enter the second mission of the Battle of New York, Hunter Killer. We begin inside the Brooklyn Tunnel that is flooded with water after it collapsed. Primary entry point is open. Stay tight. Easy to get separated down here. And our target is an enemy submarine that is stacked with missiles. Our goal is to use those missiles against its own fleet, destroying the enemy vessels and regaining control of New York City. The start of this mission is quite slow, and unfortunately I actually cannot no-clip while I'm on this whatever you call it, but I mean, the atmosphere is amazing. And it also has some really strong hints at that Modern Warfare 2 mission, where you infiltrate an oil rig with the SEALs. It feels a lot like that. And not to mention when you move through this tunnel, all of the dead bodies, man, it's again makes you feel the reality of war, something that new Call of Duties just don't do anymore. Subs on the move, intercept window is closing fast. Roger that, lead the way. What's also pretty interesting is the tunnel versus the normal like water space that you go through have different effects associated with them. So if you don't hit the triggers by using no clip, it looks very different. It's extremely cloudy and it's very hard to see your allies ahead of you. And not to mention all of the mines that you're trying to avoid. Power down, here we go. Target approaching. Oscar 2, 8 o'clock.
Mine's armed. Clear out. Good job. We'll prep the exfil. Going explosive. Hit it. Overlord, this is Metal Zero One. Sub is surfacing. Commencing assault. Roger Zero One. Continue to primary objective. We need control of the sub's missiles. But now that we have the liberty of using no clip, let's go ahead and fly through and I guess check out some of the areas that we just went through. You can see that the effects of being underwater are now completely gone, which make it really easy to be able to see this area and also see the out of bounds space that before was a lot harder to recognize. But you can see the area that we follow is essentially along a pipeline below a destroyed pier, which above us, well, we can see just how destroyed it is which it is absolutely insane how much detail there is out here. There's even street signs that seem to be pretty accurate. And just because I've always wondered this, for the rest of the city here, it does seem to be quite a bit different than the last map. So I don't think that they're the same, although I do suppose that there's a chance. And heading on over to Google Maps, we can take a look at this area in real life, which here is the stock exchange, right where my mouse cursor is. It's currently closed, that's unfortunate. It seems that that destroyed dock is actually this one right here where the helipads are at Sacker Aviation Services. And if we zoom out a bit, of course, to our southwest is Governor's Island right here, this massive chunk of land. And west of that is the Statue of Liberty. There's also Ellis Island out here with the National Museum of Immigration. And to the east is Brooklyn, which I am very curious just how much of this is actually modeled in game. And flying on up in the sky, we can see that this map is massive. It's mostly comprised of the harbor here, and the Statue of Liberty is even seen in the distance, something that I never realized while playing the mission before. She is extremely low poly, however, it's not extremely detailed out here, and there's nothing else on the island. And we can see that the island next to the Statue of Liberty is modeled here as well, and this is Ellis Island, the once great immigration center of New York City. It does seem to be pretty well modeled. There's a bunch of buildings on it, as well as some foliage. Although, obviously, I mean, it's not well detailed. Very low poly stuff going on. Further outside the harbor, there's even more of this. We can see some warehouses out here in the distance and a whole bunch more buildings. And if we go the other way, we can see the Brooklyn Bridge as well as the Manhattan Bridge, both here modeled and even part of Brooklyn is here as well. And of course, we can fly back through the tunnel once again, which if you exit Noclip while inside of here, the game will realize you're back here. The filters will come back in. It looks like water just appears out of nowhere and it will kill you. At the very back of the tunnel, there is a whole bunch of cars and debris just blocking what would have been the rest of the tunnel, but there's nothing here in the game. And interestingly enough, it turns out that all the bodies that were here at the start have now disappeared. When you come back, it seems that the game just renders them out in order to save on resources. And instead of IW cab, like an MW2, it's a Sledgehammer Games cab. Interesting. Now out here in the harbor, there is a whole bunch of warships. I myself do not know ships very well, but here's a quick look at a bunch of them. I assume some of them are supposed to be American, while others are supposed to be Russian. And you can see that there's definitely some variance in how detailed they are. Oh, there's even a life raft out here, which is kind of cool. Never noticed that before. But the vessel that we're concerned with is this submarine that has now surfaced after we hit it with some charges. And there's an enemy hind that's coming in to take us out if we don't enter it soon enough. So, I mean, I suppose let's go ahead and do that before it kills us. Oh my god. Slide on down the lantern. Right, and clear the ship. Which it is quite cool to see that inside of here, the models of the enemies change to the Russian Navy. And there's quite a few different ways that you can make your way through the sub, changing what Sandman does actively. Okay, put a kicker charge on the door. But when we get to the bridge, in normal Call of Duty style, we breach. An 
and after clearing the sub, we obtain the launch keys and launch the missiles. All right, I got the launch keys. Overlord, this is Metal Zero One. I sent Checkpoint Neptune over. Roger Zero One, copy Neptune. Frost, get on the console. Three, two, one, turn. Overlord, missiles armed and launching. Roger, SEAL team is in position for exfil. No, no! As you get on the dinghy, the missiles launch. Keep up with that Zodiac. And as well, a bunch of ships that we saw there out in the harbor start moving. Got it. Planes are flying up ahead, taking out enemy aircraft. Missiles coming in. And missiles are launching from both friendly and foe. And in a scene that's kind of reminiscent of the end of Modern Warfare 2, there she is. Go, go. Metal Zero One, we, are we end it driving our dinghy straight into the back of the helicopter. Taking off and winning the Battle of New York City. Overlord, mission complete. All Eagles accounted for. Roger, Metal Zero One. Missile strikes confirmed on multiple Russian hard targets in your AO. All primary threats neutralized. Good work, team. That's one for the books. Easy day, Overlord. Sandman out. But that is it for me here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, consider leaving a like down below. It helps me out a ton, and of course, make sure you subscribe so you can come back for more. If you want to watch more of my content, you can click one of the videos on your screen right now, but if not, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay awesome, and peace out.